Hello, my name is Dr. Diva Eamon and I'm a deep sea biologist. With the prospect of deep sea bed mining increasing, especially here in the Pacific, I'd like to share with you why the deep ocean and its inhabitants are so important and how they might be impacted by this emerging industry. Earth is a blue planet with over 65% of its surface covered by oceans deeper than 200 meters. And while 99% of that deep ocean has never been visited or seen, we know that just like in the shallows and on land, there are a variety of habitats that are home to uniquely adapted species. There are staggering diversity of corals, seamounts that dwarf the tallest mountains on land, and 30 meter high chimneys that gush superheated black fluid and provide insights into the origins of life on Earth, just to name a few. The deep ocean is not only a massive reservoir of biodiversity, but its great size provides ecosystem functions and services that keep our planet healthy and keep us alive. It regulates our climate by sequestering carbon and absorbing heat. It cycles nutrients and plays a role in detoxification. And we depend on the ocean for millions of tons of food and thousands of jobs, especially here in the Pacific. And it's fast becoming a source of resources, including genetic materials and cures for diseases. And of course, it is a place of immense cultural importance and provides unending inspiration. The deep ocean pushes boundaries, it breaks paradigms, and perhaps it can provide solutions to some of the world's greatest future challenges. And the deep ocean has also been considered as a potential source of minerals, especially here in the Pacific. Polymetallic nodules, or these are potato-sized accretions of metal that sit on the sea floor like cobbles on a street, found on plains at over three kilometers depth, but between up to six and a half kilometers depth. And then there are polymetallic sulfides found at hydrothermal vents on mid-ocean ridges between one and four kilometers depth. And finally, there are cobalt-rich crusts on seamounts between one and two and a half kilometers depth. And as you can see, each of these resources is being targeted for different key metals. But these mineral resources are found in deep sea habitats with unique species living in each. The top video shows the abyssal sea floor of the Clarion Clipton zone, a vast region stretching from Hawaii to Mexico. And research here is showing that there is very high biodiversity. Thousands of species have been collected, with 70 to 90% of those new to science. We've also found that more than half of the large species rely on the nodules themselves, corals and anemones and sponges. They use them as homes. And of course, that's the exact resource that's going to be removed. The bottom left video shows cobalt rich crusts on seamounts. And this imagery is from the West Pacific, where you can see them coating the seafloor. Seamounts are extremely productive, with often with dense corals and sponges that act like trees, providing three dimensional habitat that houses lots of other life. And some of these corals and sponges are some of the oldest animals on the planet, with many aged over 4,000 years old. And of the three environments where mining may take place, this is the least well known. And of course, on the bottom right, we have polymetallic sulfides found at hydrothermal vents. These are areas where superheated chemical and metal rich fluid gush from the seafloor, forming chimneys and powering ecosystems. And as you, as you can see, they are swarming with life that have unusual adaptations and provide clues as to how life evolved on this planet. And while the resources differ, the mining processes in all three habitats will be quite similar. Machines will remove the resource from the sea floor, it will be pumped to the surface where a ship will be waiting, they will be dewatered, and then the waste will be released back into the ocean. And of course that process will cause damage. There'll be destruction and removal of the resource, which is often the habitat, and all life in the direct path of the machines will be killed. There'll be sediment plumes, like dust storms, kicked up by machines, which could travel many kilometers vertically and horizontally, leading to a footprint which extends way beyond the actual mining operation and could result in smothering, blinding, and toxicity impacts to many of the animals. And then there'll be light and noise pollution that these animals would never have experienced in their entire life. And small scale experiments are showing us that really deep sea habitats do not recover quickly. For instance, for nodules and crusts, recovery would not occur for millions of years, as that's how long those resources take to reform, preventing many of the species from returning in that time. 
And even though we now know more than we ever had about the deep ocean, we should not be complacent. We sometimes forget that we're still in a discovery phase. The overused expression of knowledge gaps really doesn't convey the fundamental knowledge that we lack. These gaps include basic questions like what species live where and how do they eat and how do they reproduce and what are their functions, questions about their ecology. And then we have bigger questions about the functions of these ecosystems and how those functions actually work and how then they provide us with the services that they, we rely on. And while we expect many of the impacts from the previous slide, there are still many unknowns surrounding the severity of these impacts. And that's because there's been no test mining on the spatial scale or full intensity or duration that commercial mining may occur on. And so we don't know how far impacts will spread, how long they will last, what the likelihood of species extinctions will be, especially for the fauna that rely on resources. And we don't know what the impacts will be on ecosystem services. Will they impact fisheries? And will metals end up within the food web and within the seafood that we rely on? For instance, will, will the ocean's ability to sequester carbon be compromised? We don't know. And we don't really understand the impacts of deep seabed mining will have. And so if that's the case, how are we supposed to understand how those impacts might interact with other stresses, things like climate change, pollution? So really we need more time, effort and resources to continue collecting essential baseline data and gaining a much better understanding of these vitally important parts of our planet because that's what we need to make informed decisions and ultimately manage and protect our deep oceans more effectively. So thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoy the rest of the event today.